Hello students, I'm Ashal Sharma, your educator. Today we are going to discuss another concept and this concept is again related to teaching aptitude and it is called as evaluation. So we have been discussing what is teaching, what is the process of teaching and we know teaching is a process in itself. So when you call it that teaching is a process, you means that it is circular in nature, it is ever pervasive. And what is happening? It is of course going to start from somewhere and going to end somewhere as well, right? And again, it would be repeating in that cycle. So the process of teaching is very simple. It starts with a teacher and there is a student also involved there. So teacher, the one who is a more knowledgeable person will transfer something to the students. So this is transferring is called this transferring of facts, knowledge, figures is called as teaching. Teaching is when someone who has a more knowledge, you know, someone who has more knowledge is delivering those contents to someone who has lesser knowledge about that. Then what will happen? The teacher will assess the student at the, uh, you know, at the end as well. This is somewhat like evaluation and it is feedback. Right. So the teacher will assess that whatever she has been teaching is clear to the child or not. So the basic goal of a teacher is to come in the class and to fulfill the objectives of teaching. That means her basic role is to make the students understand and make them clear with whatever she is teaching. For this, she uses all the key behaviors, all the helping behaviors, instructional facilities, tools, and she tries her best to make the things clear. Once she has delivered all the content, the teaching cannot, have, cannot stop at that point of time. It is very important that learning is achieved. It is not only teaching that is important, but ultimately it is the learning that the teacher wants to achieve. So the teacher will judge that whether the child has understood something or not. That judging, that evaluating is called as evaluation. Evaluation is not only helpful for the student, but it is also helpful for the teacher as well. Why is it important? For a student, of course, evaluation is important because if they are evaluated, the teacher will understand is the concept clear to the student or not. If not, she will reteach them. Right? This is the basic thing that the teacher can do. But the teacher can also improve themselves. When she tries to judge the student and she understands that they are not they are not able to understand and comprehend the things in one go or maybe during because of this method, they will, the teacher can improve herself and use different methods. So this is how evaluation is useful for the teacher and the student as well. Let us quickly see about, uh, in, let us know more about evaluation. So evaluation is a broader term. Under evaluation, we also have measurement, assessment, and then we evaluate. So this evaluation also contains measurement and assessment. That means M plus A would give you evaluation. Now what is the measurement? Measurement is when you calculate the quantitative aspect. So the quantitative aspect of a child when it is calculated, it means it is the measurement of a child that is being done. While the qualitative, the quality is also important. So when the quality is focused, when the qualitative aspect is done, is measured, you call it as assessment. So take an example, in a class, Ram is studying. Ram is a very brilliant child according to the teacher because he comes first in the class always. Also, he is always sitting in the front row and responding in the class as well. That means my assessment would say that Ram is a good child. The marks in the examination will say what is the measurement. He scored 98% in the class, right, in that uh, exam. And what will be the evaluation? Ram being a good student scored this much. This means that evaluation also encompasses, it comprises of the qualitative and the quantitative aspects, right. So measurement plus assessment will give you what? Will give you evaluation. And measurements can be done by using different amounts of tests. So there can be placement tests, there can be aptitude tests, there can be class tests, 
all of these tests are conducted as well this is when the teacher will lead to will lead to the conclusion and this is called as evaluation evaluation is a systematic process just as your teaching is an art and science it is a systematic social process it is done using in a proper you know using proper methods proper structured method similarly evaluation is done in a structured method it is a systematic process this means it is carried out in a most systematic and a planned manner it is done in the most structured manner right so it is a continuous in nature you cannot stop evaluating the child in between it is continuous in nature it is accomplished along with the tl process tl process means teaching learning process and not just at the end of the tl process so you cannot stop evaluating in between but diagnostic evaluation your formative evaluation are also done during the course of the lectures right so it is continuous in nature teaching is continuous in nature then teaching is comprehensive in nature it is comprehensive evaluation is not intended just to access the knowledge of the student but it stress equally upon the other elements also it focuses on examining the all round personality of the student you have to comprehend the child as well you not only assess the child but you comprehend you try to understand you try to look at the holistic development of the child so you it is continuous evaluation is continuous process and it is comprehensive it evaluates the fulfillment of the instructional objectives what are instructional objectives in your teaching aptitude you will always find this word instructional objective instructional objective is why in the first place the teacher is teaching you she is teaching you with an objective that objective will use some of the instructions to achieve it these are called as instructional objectives then what are the characteristics so it involves the use of diverse procedures it can have different procedures it can have different tests different techniques through which you can judge the child or you can evaluate it helps in identifying the problems and the weaknesses of the students so that remedial measures can be adopted if the child is not able to understand then reteaching can be done remedial teaching can be done what is remedial teaching to teach them maybe outside the class so that they are fully capable to enter the class again remedial classes can be given to weaker sections of the students it is pervasive what is pervasive it is present everywhere it is crucial feature of the teaching process it helps the students grow as they get to know about their own weaknesses so the students get to know about their weaknesses and the teacher can also improve her teaching a well planned evaluation provide reliable and valid measures for the students learning potential and their learning prior knowledge of students can also be evaluated before the beginning of the teaching learning process this prior knowledge and knowing about that knowledge can help the teacher to structure the class properly this is called as placement evaluation placement evaluation if i want to see that are you capable of starting with your mba course i will ask you to give your cat entrance exam that is a placement evaluation then there are different kinds of evaluation we will be discussing the difference between placement evaluation formative submittive and diagnostic evaluation let us discuss the words first placement i'm trying to place the student somewhere so when i'm trying to check the aptitude and is the child capable to study that topic i will first of all look at the placement of the child that means is the prior knowledge that is needed for the course of the uh, studying is available to in the child's mind or not from where should the teacher start to teach the in the in the classroom then comes diagnostic evaluation diagnosis the teacher is your doctor your mentor your guide your support system your friend your mother everything right the teacher like a doctor will diagnose you the teacher will you know like a doctor uh, focus on the minute details and will tell your faults as well 
during the course of the lectures during the course of the studying process in their process of teaching and learning will always go hand in hand with the diagnostic evaluation the teacher will give you anecdotes will try to you know solve the problems will become your guiding hand like a doctor she will identify the problems this is a diagnostic evaluation then comes important jo do evaluations hain it is the formative evaluation and submissive evaluation formative evaluation form is submitted during the classroom so this kind of evaluation is done between the classes between the lectures that are given submissive you submit things you know at the end so submissive evaluation is the evaluation where grades are given and it is done at the very end after this the teacher cannot reteach the topic that is like your final examinations so your half yearlies are your submissive evaluation you still can improve yourself in your finals but your submissive is your final exams that you give at the end let us distinguish between them on the basis of function placement evaluation placement evaluation is done to check the entry level eligibility condition it is it will check the prerequisite knowledge do you have even the minimum knowledge of the thing that you are studying or it is the prerequisite knowledge and the understanding that is needed for the formative evaluation why what is the function it identifies the problem of the teacher uh, in the teaching learning process the it provides also the feedback for the improvement and the remedial measures can be taken because if you are not able to do things now maybe the teacher can improve herself and you can improve yourself that is formative evaluation submissive is done at the end it is done in between that means to grade and to certify the students about the base on the basis of their learning and on the basis of the test so that effective teaching can happen it is done at the end it is called as submissive evaluation while diagnostic evaluation is done to provide explanation for the problems identified in the formative evaluation so in the formative evaluation the teacher will give you okay so this is the problem you are not good at mathematics why are you not good at it how can you improve yourself what are the measures that can be taken is seen under the diagnostic evaluation then comes the time of evaluation so your placement evaluation is done before the beginning of the course formative is done during the course it is done on the completion of the course or the unit or the term submissive and during the course as the formative is done is seen in the diagnostic evaluation then comes domain what is the domain that they are targeting in the placement evaluation they look at your aptitude they look at the cognitive skills so it is the psychomotor affective or the cognitive domain that are the targets in the formative your psychomotor and your cognitive domains are the target and here cognitive and psychomotor or affective are the targets and in the diagnostic evaluation only affective domain is the target why because here the teacher is trying to help you here the teacher is trying to guide you like in the ptm the teacher is discussing the things with the parents giving you constructive feedback giving you a sandwiched feedback then comes technique of evaluation so it can be quantitative or it can be qualitative here the formative is basically done in the quantitative similarly quantitative and qualitative both can be done at the end it can be submissive and mostly qualitative techniques are seen in the diagnostic evaluation report here selection or rejection is the criteria either you are selected either you are good at you have performed good in the cat exam and you get a good college otherwise you will be failed you will be rejected here in the formative evaluation no grades are given it's going to help you either some portion can be added in your final examinations so it is not graded and this submissive evaluation is graded and in the diagnostic evaluation anecdotal report can be made so here portfolios can be constructed the teacher in a quantitative manner will qualitative manner will try to judge the student score comparison here mostly norm reference or criteria reference both can be used in the formative evaluation criteria is decided in the submissive evaluation norm is decided and in the diagnostic evaluation comparison of actual and expected behavior is done the teacher will te tell you 
आपसे ये एक्सपेक्टेड था एंड यू हैव डन दिस दिस मींस यू कैन डू मच बेटर हाउ कैन यू इंप्रूव दीज आर ऑल द थिंग्स दैट आर डिस्कस्ड इन द डायग्नोस्टिक इवेल्युएशन नाउ लेट अस टॉक अबाउट द क्राइटेरिया रेफरेंस एंड नॉर्म रेफरेंस टाइप ऑफ इवेल्युएशन सो द नॉर्म रेफरेंस एंड द क्राइटेरिया काइंड ऑफ इवेल्युएशन आर द टू वेज इन व्हिच द टीचर कैन look at the performance of the students so norm and criteria reference norm and criteria reference evaluation are two different ways of evaluating the students performance in norm reference evaluation the performance of the student is compared with the others so in the norm reference in the norm reference evaluation your performance will be compared with someone else performance that means percentile ranking systems are followed here while in the criteria evaluation a criteria would be decided there is no comparison and the results are stated on the basis of the criteria that is decided for example a has scored 98% marks in the test is the criteria reference evaluation as there is no comparison of the marks with other students a has scored highest marks in the test in the class is a norm reference evaluation why because here a is compared with the other students as well so take an example ram in my class as i told you such a brilliant student he is that he scored 98% this 98% is the criteria because i know and he received what he received a plus so this is the criteria according to the marks i'll give you the grades this is what this is the criteria i have decided this is the criteria reference but i said ram stood first in the class so ram ram is first then we have sham who stood second so what is it i am giving ranks here i am comparing ram's score of 98% with the percentage of sham that is maybe say 96% so what is it this is a ranking that i am giving i am comparing these two boys together so this becomes a norm reference evaluation in your criteria reference evaluation percentage is a good example while in your norm reference we have percentile let us look at the difference so in the norm reference evaluation when one student's performance is compared to what might be the expected you know what normally expected to the other students you call it as a norm reference so you are comparing it with the other students when one student's performance are compared to what might normally be expected of the other students right so this is the norm reference evaluation criteria evaluation when a student's performance is compared against the pre established criteria or a benchmark i have decided that a plus would be given to those who scored 95% and above so ram scored a plus because it is 98 percentage that he received then in the norm reference percentile grade equivalence and norm you know we have the normal curve equivalence and the scale scores that are calculated here but in the criteria evaluation written portion is you know is checked and also there is an advanced criteria so there are advanced placement test that are looked here what is the usefulness of this determining the overall development level of a child with respect to the others how is your child performing with respect to other that is why percentile is calculated how well you performed in your ugc net exam is calculated on the basis of the percentile that you received right percentile is calculated in our exam as well not percentages then you have here in your criteria reference you are trying to check the mastery level of a child you are not comparing it with the other person so it can be the competency based assessment or it can be according to the mastery level of learning these are the major ways in which the students marks can be calculated or they can be evaluated let us quickly discuss there can be different questions asked from it and they have been asking questions according to the statement wise so they can ask uh, norm reference criteria is a you know is a kind of evaluation in which uh, the there you are comparing the students so is it true or false so statement wise questions can be asked assertion reason or there can be match the following you know ugc tends to ask questions from evaluation portion and all of these are important so you should first of all know 
that there is always measurement that is quantitative in nature, assessment qualitative and then you have the evaluation at the end. There are few characteristics. Most important, it is continuous and comprehensive in nature. Then we have different types of evaluation like the placement evaluation where you place a child. Diagnostic evaluation, anecdotal portfolios are created. The teacher is trying to tell you something more than already the formative assessment has told you. Formative assessment where the teacher told you where you lack, how to improve on all these things are told in the diagnostic evaluation. Formative evaluation done in the between while your uh, summative evaluation is done at the end. So criteria reference is basically seen in the formative and norm reference that is done at the end is seen in the submittive evaluation. In the norm reference evaluation, two students are compared or more students are compared. One student is compared to a lot of people. In the criteria reference evaluation, proper criteria is pre-described and according to that, the child is given the marks, right? So I hope you like today's video. I tried to summarize all the kinds of evaluation I hope you liked it. If you have any doubt, you can write it in the comment section. I'll surely reply to you. Thank you so much.